Okay. Alright, so today... Uh, what are we gonna do? My recommendation when doing blocking plus is to really take it as far as possible, but there are some times where it's like, you just don't have the patience. So, I may just skip a couple parts because I'm lazy. I do think what we can do is we can just edit a couple things to make it more appealing from front view. And then what we will do is uh, we will then try to spline. Um, honestly, it's better to do it early in my opinion. However, the secondary motion stuff actually is a little bit annoying to do if you don't have tools like space switching and stuff. Uh, for work, it's something that I would bake in, in in the early stages, but because like, so for example at work, we would have a space here for the hair, spaces for like all the way down the chain, so I can just bake them into world, world, world rotation. And essentially when I spline and do all that stuff, like it just stays there and it's not a big deal. The only issue right now is that I don't have that set up. So if that's the case, then the best way to do it is to keep in mind what you're going to do, but you don't have to touch it until you fix and polish the stuff on top. So for example, right now, I will only touch the hair after I have completely finished touching the head because this is a, this is a dependency, right? This hair is always going to be based off of what the head angle is, it currently is. So I, so I, in this situation, I'm just going to avoid the hair for now, even though I post it out a little bit. We're just going to keep it as is, and we'll deal with it after. Okay, so right now there's something about the arms that we're doing here. Arms come up. I feel like this needs to have a pose instead of just having open arms. So when she comes up, let's quickly look. We look over here at some of these jump poses. I feel like some of these are actually even just like just generally better. Um, even this is a side view, but having both arms go back is not as appealing, right? There's a lot of things that we can do to generally make the pose feel more in a dynamic, especially because we're given the consideration that we have this camera angle, then we should 100% try to see if we can get something that feels a little bit more dynamic. Uh, let's see. When you get feedback from non-animators, do you try to take a grain of salt or try to absorb all kinds of feedback regardless of? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, I would always take a grain of salt. Feedback in general. Feedback in general is always, uh, subjective per se. Um, feedback has to be taken in the context of who is giving it, to whom, as well as timing, as well as context of the product so some feedback may be applicable but maybe just given at the wrong time or you cannot act upon it right and so for example it's uh most people can still point out that something is off even if they aren't anime so i would still take it into account they won't be able to give a solution most of the time it's still nice to know yeah so on that point energy is just mentioning basically you know laid men laid people you know can always still have an opinion or a perspective on something that they cannot describe right when you watch a movie you may not be familiar with every single element of what makes the movie good or whatever but you know to yourself how you feel about it so feedback is always a two-way street how you give it how you take it short answer probably is just listen to all feedback but you don't have to necessarily apply all feedback right given the fact too that as artists we are also limited by our own capabilities of what we can apply or understand so that would also be something to, to consider sometimes your boss will tell you hey you need to fix this and this is something that should be changed and you're like yeah i know i just don't know how to fix it well then rip
Okay, so let me explain what I'm doing right here quickly. So we have this stretch pose, right? And then we have this down pose. And you notice that basically this is over two frames. What I'm doing here is I'm trying to author specifically right here. Now this you can, you can do in the splining phase, but a lot of times in splining, I prefer actually being a little bit more specific before we go into spline. So what I'm trying to do here is if you were to spline this, it would be 50-50, it would tween in between. But right now what I want to do is I want to make sure that when he hits this contact pose and comes down here, that his feet are already planted and don't have to do anything. One thing that you can do, I think, is understand how to do offsets with translates versus rotates, right? So there's a very easy exercise that we do in the beginning when we start learning animation, which is basically the box and the box, like a long rectangle that if you swing from either the top or the bottom point and you translate really fast across the screen, it'll drag, right? It'll drag in one direction. Um, let me, uh, I can, uh, let me just do this just to explain. So let's say you have a cube and you are going to animate, but we're going to animate from the bottom. When you key from the left and then to the right, right? Zoom, it's gonna drag like this or something, right? Ooh. And one thing that we know is that it's going to arrive at its final point translation wise, right? Like this first. And then you want then the rotation on the this thing to be either its maximum or you know sort of coming off of it. But let's just say it's max. Then you say you want this to come in, right? So this relationship, boom, is a very natural one. But I think one approach that you can do a lot of the cases is this. So I'm taking her root translate. And what I really want to do here is I want her root translate right here to basically be as close as possible to this bottom bottom uh, minimum point. But you can see that automatically it already took her front her like body rotation. And we're going to just take her rotation which currently is tween to this part side, but we want it to actually be favoring this back side, right? So translate wise, she's reached her apex, but then rotation wise, she's still dragging. And then this applies in a cascading effect all the way down the chain. Oh, so for this object, um, I didn't change the controller necessarily. Um, this is basically just when you create an object, it will have its own pivot point. And by default, they always have it in the middle, right? If you want to change the pivot point of what you're selecting, you can tap insert. I believe you can also hit D, but I have D on a, I have, I have hockey D to a different command. So the easiest thing is to just hit insert. You tap insert, it gives you the pivot tool that you can modify. So basically you can choose where you want the pivot to be now. And then once you hit insert again, it turns off and then you can scale from that point. You can rotate from that point. Just know that it's not dynamic. This is no matter now, no matter what you do and when you select it, it'll always be that point. So it's just easier for me to, to sort of to demonstrate when you're animating from like the bottom point with the offsets and drag. Why not use the pivot function from Animbot? Oh, good question. Because I don't know how to use Animbot. I don't know how, I don't know where the pivot function thing is. Let's see, pivot, temp pivot, temp pivot to last object, temp something, something, something. All right, we tap this thing. That's cute. That's neat. Yeah, I think that'd be very powerful actually in a lot of cases if you're animating key by key. I think that's actually really nice. Okay, comes down. Guess this is okay for now. We're gonna drag her upper shoulders a lot more.
Okay, I want to do one small thing here at the very end, which is add a little bit more character inst instead of just going straight from this pose to this pose. I think everything else is like decent. Um, for the purposes of this exercise, we're just going to spline most of it just to go through the motions. But at the very end, where she comes up, down, and then comes up to the hat, I do kind of... Did I not update the information? So I kind of want to do something where instead of going straight up and down, uh, she does something a little bit more like a little bit more S oriented. So let's see. The easiest thing to do would be to see what foot she's on. She comes down onto this back foot. Okay, you know what? My brain can't actually handle this. We're just gonna start splining now because I just, I. There is also an interesting thing where splining versus um, block is like very different. The way that you're working in blocked versus the way you work in spline is very different. And sometimes for some people, which would be me, I can't get a good sense of how it feels 100% of the time unless it's like spline. You know what? Yeah, let's just do that. Select all controls. We're gonna go go ahead and do this. We're gonna go to preference to spline. We're going to open here into our graph editor, and then we'll see all the crazy shit. All right, how we're we gonna approach this? Number one is probably turn off the hat. All right, not too bad. Not the worst. We're gonna grab this thing. We're going to untoggle all of this stuff so that we can do whatever we want with this. We're going to turn off the hair conditions. We're gonna turn off the hat. Hello, ball girl. You looking fine today. All right, number one thing that we need to look at then is this root. It is so soft. hotkeys to translate things screen left and right. I sort of do. Um, so there's a set hotkey setup that I use that's really, really useful. It's kind of like a tweener. Basically, let's say we have these two poses, right? We have this pose and this pose, right? So these are the two points for this foot in translate uh, X, right? So we have here at this value and at this value. Um, I have a tweener set to D and F, which basically says if you hit D, take whatever value is here, key it and um, tween it towards this key, the one on the left. If I hit F, F will go to the other direction. So I go to this key. So essentially if I go D, 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 I am pushing it and basically making it weighted to this side. If I hit F, 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 it goes to the other side. So this would be in this situation on the T, Z, on the T, X. If I'm on T, Y, T, Y is like this, it'll just do up T, Y. Now this will apply when you have something selected. So if I select only a T, Y, it'll only affect T, Y. Um, if I select only T, X, it'll only select T, X. If I do both T, Y and T, X, then it'll do both. If I don't have anything selected, it'll just take every single channel value and then it'll just move everything. So like in this situation, you'll see that all these values move. Um, so that's why you'll see me in this situation when I'm keying back and forth. I'm like on this frame, I actually want it to be favoring one side versus I wanted to favor the other. So in my head, I don't have to move anything. Obviously I can like tween, 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 and then like adjust it a little bit, but um, it's just easy for me to go back and forth and then just like DF, DF, DF if I want it to be in a specific spot instead of having to like um, move stuff with the, the mouse pointer and be like, oh, over here, I wanted more over here. So this is also why when you were doing a workflow, I think it's best to always think about extremes because the in-between stuff you can always like finesse later. Essentially right now, I was looking at the spacing of this jump with the feet. The interesting thing that we were running into um, is when you spline, everything becomes a lot softer, right? 
So you'll have noticed that even though I put in some poses that I thought I liked in, in blocking, the feet didn't hold really nice visual poses as she was jumping and going through stuff. So you'll notice here that what I did is I tried favoring this, this read here, as well as the extension read here, and then the straight pose read here. Um, I'm still, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this foot next. You'll notice that like the transition poses into these are all very short. It's like I ease out of it over two frames and then you strike a straight. And that when you're jumping feels a little bit more graphic. Um, as for example, one thing you'll notice here over here on, on her hands and her arms is that when she does her jump and because it's a splying, they're just spinning and they're just moving the entire time. Obviously I need to fix that. But my style so far that I've been trained to do at Riot is pretty snappy. So the best thing you can do is to get this pose to read, this pose to read, this pose to read, and then read it, hold it as long as possible before transitioning to the next one, and then hold that and then transition to the next one. So right now the feet are feeling slightly okay. I think. And that's okay. So you notice here, for example, too, that after I smoothed out the root a little bit, which I'm I was taking as a higher priority. So I took the root, I took the translate X. I'm tr I was trying to smooth out a little bit of this like this curve. So basically, it's just like saying, okay, the center of gravity for this character, moving at this speed, it slows down here before it speeds up and jumps after the hold, right? Like so, she comes up, she does the hold on the jump, and then pushes off. Um, I was prioritizing this even spacing, which I didn't have in my blocking necessarily, but then it messed up all the feet. So I was just basically reposing the feet to match sort of the root. And what I want here is I want this foot, remember that foot strikes and foot plants, you always want them to be preceding what's happening on the root. So right here, she needs to catch her feet. She needs to catch her weight faster than she's going to. So even though this foot on the back is trailing because she just pushed off with it, before she comes down, it has to it has to be here. It doesn't have to, but in most cases, if you want someone to have a prepared jump like this, their feet need to be at that spot before the root is gonna get is gonna engage with the momentum change. So here, if your root is taking priority and this is where it's gonna be, then your feet need to arrive here faster. So actually, I might even take this and shoot it forward. That might be, that spacing might be a little bit even for me, I think. Okay, so even though this foot coming up like this looks really nice, I feel like it doesn't fit the arc of the motion. So we might have to leave it a little bit lower. I think we can bring her down. Mm, let's see, stays up, stays up, then it comes down. Actually, might be not too bad. We might need to ease it a little bit more. So we'll take her and go half. Oh, Jesus, I'm striking her at the wrong foot. Oh, well, that's awkward. Okay, this really isn't much as splining as it is just like freaking reblocking. <laughs> but it's whatever. I think this is the this is one of those things where it's like when I was blocking I didn't block this beginning part at all with enough information. So you just uh, read basically just anything you didn't do, you just got to redo.
Okay, at the very least, there's like somewhat represent- there's some representation of locomotion going on here. Have you ever had an animation that you imagined but were unable to turn into reality? Yeah, every single one. I think in the end, you just gotta be flexible. If you have an idea, you try your best to sort of like, sort of uh, do it. Like see, the blocking that we had, it was very different. This uh, this doesn't feel exact at all what, like, what we're shooting for, right? I'd say like the easiest thing is for exercises if you're like doing really simple stuff. As you get better, you'll be it'll be closer and closer to what you want. Um, as you like master the multitude of controls, but it's it, it's a very tricky thing because like anytime you're working on a new project, you're gonna be working with a new character, new rig, and you have to relearn how to like get that style, that character right. right. If you worked on one character for a very long time, you'll get better at doing that quicker. I am having so much trouble just like freaking getting her to like just look okay when she's moving. We just uh, try our best. Gotta rip the band-aid. Like I was doing blocking and I was like, I can't think of what I'm supposed to do anymore. I have an idea, but like I can't really do it. So I'm just gonna start splining. And you just pray for the best. And then right now you're just like, we're just looking at this and we're just like, her running with the arms out, it's not doing it for me at all. So I am gonna have to probably re look at that. Maybe add add poses where she's like sort of sort of running a little bit more or with the arms. Yeah, we'll have to see. I don't know. Again, I think the best thing that we can do is take it slow, take one thing at a time. So for example, right now it's like, oh, I took the root. I sort of fixed the root to something that was similar to what I was looking for. And then you update things based on that and then you revisit a new thing that you think is gonna be okay and then you you know continue doing that over and over and over so yeah now that it not being exactly how you planned it is not necessarily bad i've definitely had stuff that came out okay and also surprisingly okay you know i think you just got to be flexible take it as it comes and uh be let let yourself be inspired with the different options you have available to you as you go okay eventually i'm going to revisit this um this jump a little bit i think there's a little bit more we can do to like really push a little bit of the spacing on it but at least for now for the splining thing i think motion wise it it, it exists right this beginning portion it um uh, what the first what 40 frames first 35 frames it is passable in this line so we'll look at the next stuff here okay so what we need to resolve here is when she comes down on 31 so let's go 30 to 60. okay so also here's one thing right so when we were looking at blocking from this 33 to 40 there's there's no keys that we've added here right so when you're blocking it's going to be frozen in this pose and then snap to this pose, which is where we got a lot of the snappiness from, right? So to note that actually what we should have done, if we really cared, was to key pose something at 38 that really, really, really leans on this pose. So we got that snappiness back, but that's because we are holding this exact pose all the way through. So if you're holding a pose graphically, then instead of going straight into spline and then having a really soft like a tween from one to one, you are going to have to author somewhere along that uh, like time frame which side you're favoring, right? And uh, then that's always the easiest way to do it. Just like copy the control pose over. Okay, so there's one small issue I think with this thing here, which is the fact that there's almost zero keep alive on it, even though it's pretty snappy. So we may have to add a little bit of drift on it or something. Okay. Okay, so one thing that we'll have to look at too as we go further is we're gonna need to track these feet and then the head. Is I feel like we need to be a little bit better about getting those to feel nice together. Because the, the way I want it to go, if this makes any sense, the best way to make this feel really nice here is I'll just like graph out. We need a visual representation of, so essentially we're looking for something like this, right? And then we stretch you out. Boing, kind of like that, right? Boing. 
but we need a little bit more of this graphic representation as the relationship with the head, right? I think that's like one of the main things that we have to look out for, which currently I do not have yet. At least from like a, when you watch it, you don't really 100% get this feeling quite yet. It's so much easier animating cubes, guys. Why don't we just animate cubes? Okay, so here we want the hand to reach out immediately. And here it is tweening. So we're just gonna convert into the correct space here. Give me your hand, please. And we'll put you into IK. I think I'm going to have to eventually take this head and push it back even further. Kind of like more like, oh, like this, even more so just to get that feel in there. Right now it's not quite, I think we track the head too. Track the head. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Let's try using the, the arc tracker. Ooh, oh, nope. this thing. All right, you guys can see here that the spacing and then also the arc is not as good. So what we want for this is like this to come up, stay up, and then slowly ramp on a like a, on a, like a small S like this. Because right now this is janky, and then th this part here and this part here are janky. Ooh, dude, this tool is awesome. When you want the squash and stretch, you need that. You need the head relationship to the feet. So the head, root, and the feet relationship is very important for that like squash and stretch relationship. Woo. Okay, what I'm doing now is I'm tracking. So this is an interesting thing for IK, right? IK, the relationship of your ankle to your knee to your root um, is always tricky because you have almost no control over the position of the knee uh, unless you're pinning. So in this situation, all you have to just remember is if you're gonna be doing something where he's doing a squash and stretch, like this stretch into a squash, you're going to make sure that these knees are always going to have to be kind of like in the middle. So right now when she reaches down here, this is already too low. Because if you're gonna track the knees, you want them to be here, then like somewhere like here, then they come down and then they go up a little bit. So you get a little bit like vroom, kind of like overshoot, right? But right now they kind of do this too much. And the reason why they're going too low is because her root is too over her, her ankles, right? This is where it's bending from. So in order to get these to come up, you need the relationship of their root right here with your ankles to be further back, right? Just think of it as a triangle. So in this situation, I'm just gonna translate on the object space and she is going to go back. Because her weight shouldn't necessarily be over her feet completely right now. And then as she comes in, then here, 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 then you can see they go down a little bit. Boom. And then this is too much, so you bring her back. She holds here. And then I think maybe she can um, go down on this one because then you'll get a little bit of that spring, right? So when you go into this small antic, into this push jump, this two frame antic, one, two. This is her root going over her heels because she's about to push off to the right. I think we can layer in a little bit more because right now you can see that the knees and the uh, root are moving but the ankles and the toes do not so we will couple this motion on this with a slight like this and you'll notice that in this situation right if you go too far now your relationship of your knees is, is this is moving more than the knees which is not what you want all you want here is the heels and the toes to move a little bit so that you compensate for your root changing that way you get this whole unit to feel like it's like uh, the same thing, as opposed to like this. When you have this, it feels like she's doing all her motion on her toes, which a dancer could do in a situation. But right now you're just trying to layer in like the subtlety of the fact that like she's moving over her, her weight is moving over her toes. Yeah, her coat will need to move, um, but we're not worried about any of that right now because that's all secondary. Uh, for now so we're just we're just basically doing her arms upper torso head neck and legs and then everything else after will have to come a little bit later cool the landing feels a little bit cleaner tiny bit cleaner 
Let's look at this stretch pose. We've already solved some of this here with the feet. Nice, she does a jump. She's doing the stretch. I think one interesting thing with this one is we have one frame of going up, which is perfect. Then we go in the straight, but you can notice that everything moves at the same time, right? So we need to be a little bit more specific with this arm. Obviously we want to go straight, but obviously at this point we don't need to be that straight. Uh, here, the roots moving, but the feet don't have to move. So we're going to select all the feet and the pivot on the, uh, whatever these things are called, the stupid pointer thingies. And we are going to weight them back to the ground. Woo! Um, because she is pushing off, we will put this also to that same velocity. We may do a little bit fancy thing here where her foot can rotate and we'll just make sure it's pinned a little bit here then this is a little bit too high because of the knee and if this is a straight actually we're going to take a root over this frame, we'll straighten it out. I think we can do something a little bit graphic. We'll keep her foot pinned. But we'll do something like this. So you get some shape change. Yeah, there's so much more work to do on this one. But I know I think it's getting to a point where it's like, yeah, it makes sense. We've gone through gone through blocking into spline so it's passable. We'll take the arms quickly because this should be a pretty easy solve. Or she comes down. I think we can delay these arms a little bit too. Go halfway so you get more of that ease. And here we'll do a little bit more too. It's a tiny bit softer. You can see here right now, it's like, woo, and then she, they are delayed here a little bit. We have a little bit of overlap. It softens a tiny bit, so. Okay, jumps up here. She definitely needs to straighten out her torso here first. So, it's bent here. We're going to zero out on this one. She is a little bit up straight though. I think for this reach, this shoulder should also extend way more. Okay. Wait. Wait. I will admit guys, animating on stream is very, very different from just animating by yourself. It has been uh, challenging to say the least, but you know, it's fun. All right, here's another issue that we've run into. Not issue, but the same thing. When we had this key before, now this is drifting a lot. So to add a little bit of more snap, we will select all controls again, uh, and we will key, and we will twin to the previous. And I wonder if one frame is enough on this transition. Yeah, one should be fine. Do multiple animators work on a single champion? Um. If we're talking about new champions like Gwen, I would say there is usually one main animator. So Gwen, for example, was pre predominantly animated by uh, Anthony Jang, who previously worked on Akali uh, and Aphelios and other stuff. Um, but he had help from a couple other animators on a couple emotes and a couple small things. Usually there's one animator that like takes the rain on direction and style and stuff, but it's pretty hard for one animator to do everything. So in a situation where uh, people need to pitch in, then we do. So I think I've resolved sort of how tight I want this to be. There's definitely some small things that we need to fix, but since we're still focusing on spline and I have only like 45 minutes left, we're going to just finish up the rest of this Part. So uh, we're going to double look at this whole thing. I think all the feet stuff is fine. We'll have to sort of solve a little bit of the tracking, but otherwise I think we can just polish or spline this cog first and then that'll be perfect. 
So the drop is a little bit soft. Uh, let's just do that first. So the soft here, you can see, it goes from extreme to ease into your even spacing into ease. So I think what we can do is we can just like, like that, right? Hoo, hoo. Okay, actually, let's just look at that closely. So we go to 90. Hoom. All right, you guys see that? You know what? Let's even it out, and we'll do it A and B. Extreme, 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 extreme. Like that. So when we select this, you can see here. Let's swap. So this is soft. Which is kind of what we had in the um, first version. And then we swap. It feels a little bit better, right? Um, and the only thing, the only reason why it's like this is because then you're you're easing a lot slower at the top, and then your transition is like over one frame or two, and this is where you get a little bit of that like kick, right? Obviously, in a non-cartoony kind of thing, this is um, this is just a style. You get a little bit more just like impact. Uh, but both are fine depending on what approach you want to do. In this situation, I'm just doing a lot of like of this kind of style just because that's what I'm used to. It definitely does. I mean, so personality is a good question. Personality, I would say, doesn't really relate to sort of like perkiness or i mean it does but not like snappiness snappiness is a style not a personality personality is much more oriented towards the characters and her decisions so is she shy is she confident is she proud is she uh, aggressive or scared you know kind of those things and those are more of decisions and acting choices as opposed to style though there is a gray zone where they sort of overlap because a snappy style generally creates a much more high energy feeling. So if you want someone that feels lazy, it's hard to have a lazy person have a snappy style. But that's also not necessarily true because in a fighting game, you have a, a coherent style where everything is very snappy, but within that space, you can still have characters that have poses and like choices that sort of make them communicate that they're lazy, even though they're in a, like a fighting game. We're going to look at a couple small things here on the feet. She lands on her feet, but then she needs to come back like that. So there's a little bit of two things. One, her feet splay out, and then she needs to reposition back onto this one. So there's a couple options of doing this, I think. One is you have to do like every single step as one person would, where it's like left, right, left, right, and then go into this position. Right now, I'm sort of cheating it where they just blend straight in. I think in this situation, I can cheat a little bit here where I don't have to do all three steps. I can just do one main step into a drift on this foot. So we just need to make sure that this back foot or currently front foot, but back foot here, when it comes down in contact, we definitely want first off all of these feet to be here on this key. This key, this key. So we're going to go straights, get the contact. As she comes down, I think we can already tween into this. But then here is the extreme of the feet. So we will actually key them harder and harder and harder so that they almost reach apex. So contact straight, they push out. going to have to edit the root a little bit later because it's a little bit wobbly but the feet reaching this part first on the outside I think feels good and we're going to keep them in here okay so there's an interesting here so you start notice here that the initial frame is 119 to 126 but you can see that it's blending right it's slide what's interesting here is all about offsets right so what you want is you want her root to go first instead of having everything go with it. So I'm gonna just take this keyframe, shoot them back 100 to this pose. So you see they're still stuck, they're still planted. And just by doing that, you'll be able to notice here that like, you already get the sense that her roots going up first because they're 
pushing off on these feet first and then the feet will move. And even though currently like the actual order of process is not exactly what we want, the fact that you're saying I need these food feet to move later than the root is already the correct decision, right? You get a little bit of that tension. But then what we need to do is once this foot plants here, we do need this foot to go back. So once it is behind here, you can start bringing it back. And then remember, it has to hit a final pose before the root gets there. So we have to get there faster. Root goes up. We can probably afford to keep the foot locked a little bit longer. There you go. And then now we need to offset the foot comes here. And remember, the one thing is interesting is you can't have two feet moving at the same time if you're not jumping, usually. So this foot here in the back, we are going to keep from moving. Here it stays, here it stays, don't move please. Until after this one has finished. And then we can slowly bring you in and we're going to ease you. Okay, so we have a little bit of order operations here. Now we're going to couple the root with that. So in order for this right foot to move, you need her root to go over to her left side. So we're going to author in. Jumping off on this foot first, this side. And then once she pushes off, left. foot is planted, we can swing her back to the right. And then we'll key further here. Nice. Okay, so we have all the building blocks. Obviously, I think right now it's a little bit like, whoo, whoo, a little bit too fast. So we're going to need to slow down this entire thing. So we select all, and then we're actually gonna do something here where she comes down, and when she comes up, she's actually gonna sit on this side a little bit longer. And then we drag everything out. Cool. And then here we're going to want to author in a little bit of up and down here. A little bit of raise over the foot. Then she comes down into a settle. And this is obviously exaggerated. But you can see here, down, up, down, up. We'll minimize this a little bit. Nice. And then we will do... Because we chose to do something here where her root kind of goes over to the left, we're, and then her foot here actually does this straight line B line, I think we'll do something a little bit um, more organic where when it comes back, we're gonna actually swing it in so that the path from here is, uh, is kind of like a curve. Because remember also one thing to notice is that if your root goes to the left, your leg in terms of its biological length doesn't change, right? So anytime your root goes into the left direction, you have to try to think if you there are ways where you can bake in sort of like the fact that your appendages have to move with each other. So it actually feels natural for the leg to come in if your root goes to the left because you, the point from this point to your root needs to stay consistent. It can't just automatically stretch, right? Now, obviously, if you're stylistically choosing to do stretch frames, it's a little bit different. But when you're doing subtle stuff, I think, like side, like side steps and stuff, bring it in just like a little bit like this before kicking it out here is a pretty natural thing to do, right? We want to kick out slightly right before her root goes out. So we'll hold it to here and then kick you out. Okay, we'll swing it in. But then also we have to note that 
that the rotation is not happening right now either. So actually we'll layer in, honestly, this is not spining, this is polishing and it's not something I should be doing right now, but you know, since I'm in the mood and we're doing it, we're just gonna be doing it. So we're gonna turn the foot out like that. So as it pulls back to the left, it pulls like this, right? One, two. And we'll also hold it like that until he strikes to the left. And that's when you strike with the side of the heel. One, two, one, two over. Like that. And then the knee also has to connect. So key here, foot is pointing out is still pointing out. Then it goes over. Okay, so that wasn't all very, very necessary, but you get an idea here where there's detail on her foot. And I think we will do another, we'll have to do another pass on it because right now in terms of its spacing, it doesn't 100% read as nice. I think I can soften Right there, it's a little bit too harsh. But I think at least again, the keyframes exist and we can play off of that. Okay, I still need to do a pass on the root on the floating portion on the side. Right here, it feels a little bit drifty and slow. Solo Mink 8228 asks, hi, you use reference? Um, I do use some reference. I don't use reference of people or myself very often, though there are situations where it's necessary. If you're looking at dance reference, if you're looking at acrobatic reference, it's very, very useful. Otherwise, for something like this uh, that we are currently still working on, I did use reference for the character, reference to concept art for personality and stuff, but otherwise... No, reference is not cheating. Uh, well, I, let's, let's caveat. It depends on how you're using reference. If you're using reference to get ideas and uh, drive sort of like your creative process it's fine but the point of reference is not to copy the point of reference is to basically help educate you on how to do something accurately and in this situation it's emulating believability the whole point of using reference is to figure out what elements of real life can i adopt into my work that will therefore create the believable choices i'm making if you think about like 2d painting right you're losing reference to understand how does light affect an object? What are the colors? What are the shapes and values that I'm looking for? The whole point of reference is not to copy, it's to imitate and learn and understand, and therefore allowing you to then use that knowledge to do something different, right? So inherently reference is not cheating, it is a learning tool. However, there are a lot of people that use reference, quote, quote, as a uh, crux to make art or be the foundation of their ideas right so that's probably where it's like it gets very dangerous especially in the situation where people are tracing or copying there's a very gray zone right um but inherently the use of reference is generally with good intent so okay um boop, boop comes around she's going to drift up Perfect. It's a little bit drifty, so we're just going to eat, we're just going to keep these things uh, favored to one side a little bit. Okay, her drift is a little bit too harsh on the down. So we'll keep her up here and we'll even space it a little bit here. Think. Up, down, stretch, straight down. I think maybe we can do something here where the hand comes forward. 
Okay, here's good. We're going to continue dragging, actually. We'll take another key. Drag. I would also love to layer in a little bit of TZ in some of this animation. Uh, obviously, we're animating the front cam, but it would be nice also, I think, maybe just to add a little bit of variance. Because you can see here, she literally jumps and does everything on one axis. But for the purposes of this, I think it's fine. Not too big of a deal. You know, we're animating the camera, so... No harm, no foul. Okay. One last thing that we're going to do for spining. Um... I want this ending part where she goes thru thru right here to have a bit more of a comical kind of like magic he feel. So when she goes into this drift, I want all of this. She doesn't have space for this. Is there a way for me to get this to... Oh, actually, yes, you're right. Let's try this. I select everything here. Am I allowed to do this? Oh my God. If I'm allowed to do this, I'll be so 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 impressed select everything okay perfect so far rotate oh my god that's actually kind of sick okay 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 that's actually kind of sick okay we select one we select two we select three four now i take temp pivot okay so my whole idea here is when she goes up and grabs everything then she has like a drift So we have a lot of stuff here that I think splining has almost solved. It, I, I haven't, oh, there's still so many small things that we could fix. But I think for now, we can just use this as a building block and we'll take it to the finish next week, I think. We'll just, we'll just try to hit everything really briefly. I'm probably gonna need to make a list. That way I, I know what I'm gonna be touching. Hair is going to have to take a pass. That's at the very end, though. We don't care too much about that. I think there are still some solve issues that we have to do with her hands. Like, coming in here with two arms is fine. I might need to change the pose to be down low. They come up. Then they shrink in. And then they come up like this. I might need to hold an extra pose here. Otherwise, it's not readable. This comes down. This is cool. This feels pretty decent. I kind of want to change something about this read. Maybe I t maybe I do something where her knee is not straight and it's like a maybe it's like a it's like a this thing something that's a little bit more dynamic. Having just completely straight like this is a little bit funky. And then some polish on this arc and then the hair the hat definitely needs a little bit more love but i would say overall it's not an abomination so i guess that's we have that going for us So I've added in a slight layer of the hat coming off her head. But I do need to polish that a little bit. Thank you everyone for joining me this week. Uh, we will revisit this on Sunday next week at 3 p.m. PDT. We'll do another session for about three hours, I would think. Depend. Uh, Clash isn't next week either, right? It's in a couple weeks from now. So I hope that was helpful in some ways. So thanks for dropping by, and I will see everyone next week. <laughs>